I'm Adam Collins. This is Isabel Westbury. Welcome to Women's Crick Zone's coverage of the World T20, now known as the T20 World Cup in Australia. This is the outside view. We're in London, where it is freezing cold outside. The rain is coming down, so we're filming our preview of this tournament inside Izzy. We'd love to be there. Circumstances haven't allowed for it this time, but we're going to be at every game of this tournament. I think I pretty much ruled out going outside. And besides, I'm so sad to be here in the cold and dark and rain and seeing lots of updates from players and people out there in the sun and what looks like to be a very big build up to um, to the tournament. Yeah, the seventh edition of the Women's World T20, as I say, now rebranded uh, for this iteration. Australia have been champions four out of the six times that it's been held. They're the raging hot favourites of the host country. Let's go to them first in the mighty Group A. So Izzy, in every World Cup, there's a, a group of death and this feels like it's Group A, as I mentioned, the hosts Australia, so formidable, almost unbeatable in home, home conditions. They've only lost five out of 31 T20s in their last 31 they've played. It speaks volumes about how strong they are. Well, they've got a recent brilliant track record. They've also got a historic brilliant track record in the number of World Cups that they've won. So, and, and the home favourites, of course, the crowd behind them. You can't not have them as the favourites. That said, India are probably the most exciting team on the planet right now. They've got an average age of, I think, 23, super young, no fear. They haven't got the kind of complexes of having to face Elise Perry or somebody. They're the ones that they're facing first off. And they've also beaten Australia in the last two matches they've played in World Cups. So... Is it, if, if there is a chink to be found in, in the Australian armour, and it is hard to see given they have been, as I say, so formidable, it might be the fact that Taylor Valenick, the fearsome Bendigo bullet, the big quick, is out. Molly Strano, domestic player of the year, replaces her on the eve of the tournament. Valenick has been ruled out via injury. They did lose a couple of games in the Tri-Series. India and England having that perfect warm-up tournament before they get into the real stuff. And Elisa Healy is out of form. Of course, she was player of the tournament the last time it was played in 2018 with 225 runs, averaging 56. But um, she isn't at the moment prolific with blade in hand so maybe it's a good time for these other teams in the group to get Australia. I think it's a really good lead up to a tournament where there's that sort of glimpse of hope because on, on any sort of stats on, on the tournament Australia should be far and beyond anybody yep. else but I think the fact that there is a weakness they have lost they have lost um, matches in the warm-up their star player as you say isn't quite firing I think the danger is is that the start of any new tournament is a reset button and I can just see Healy having gone over her blip just going right boom the one thing I would say for Australia, which serves them extremely well, is their strength and depth. I think of Rachel Haynes especially. I feel as though this could be a tournament where it's less about the top order explosiveness and more about the middle order kind of anchors. It's kind of a very passe name these days, but it's the ones that can be there if if the top order fails, they can be there to manage it, but if the top order goes, they still have that, that capacity to be able to really let loose. And I think Haynes has the experience, but also just the quality of a player that she is in that middle order. And I think around her, you've got Meg Lanning as well. Perry coming in with the bat later it's it is that strength and depth I think that is what's going to really be the difference between the good teams and the best teams in Australia regrettably perhaps are one of the best teams yeah the the expectation management uh, issues is always there around a favorite but Australia the clear favorites Izzy, you mentioned India's comparative youth, No Goswami, No Madali Raj, of course, since the last time this tournament was played and on the other side of the ledger they have serious youth in that top four uh, they have something special going on there. Absolutely. And not only do they have something special, but they're actually using it. I think in the past, um, in a sort of wider cricketing context, you think about the men as well. They've been quite a conservative team, holding on to players perhaps that you think maybe could move on, hang, hand down the mantle. But this this Indian team is a breath of fresh air. And I think T20 is a, a format where you need to have that sort of that no inhibitions, that no, no past scars, which I think some other players around the different teams might well do. Uh, yeah, Shafali Verma, I think she was the youngest uh, player, uh, Indian player to score an international 50 she she hits the likes of Perry the likes of Catherine Brunt back down the ground mm. over their heads I mean these players aren't used to that and I think that that's going to be key and, and it's exciting I think that's what T20 is about as well and who knows whether it's really Mandana we, we know what a sensation she's been in the last few years whether she might just take the tournament apart she certainly got the capacity to we've seen Harman Preet Kaur the captain of course she's had success in Australia and in global tournaments uh, Jemima Rodriguez goes from strength to strength but they, they've got a well, number of match winners there. I was thinking earlier as I was coming in today, Mandana is an old hand now at the mm. age of what, 21, 22? Yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous, the fact that she's now somebody that can really manage. And we're talking about Haynes for Australia. She could play that role for, for India. And she has that experience around the world, both internationally and domestically playing in the BBL or the Kia Super League. I think this 
there is certainly a potential for India to take part in the tournament. Uh, they were held tight by the West Indies in, in the warm-up game. Uh, Poonam Yadav, the ever-reliable spinner. I mean, a spinner like that, and you would say that India's bowling is their weaker spot, but um, there's still room in women's cricket for, for those slower spinners, and India have done well out of those in the past. Yeah, it's one that sort of, it's a very... Um Un, what's the word? Almost unattractive. It's it's not it's not the it's not in vogue having a spinner which doesn't necessarily look that that great. But actually, if you look at the numbers, look at the way in which they really tie up a team. I think England have suffered that in the past where they've almost dismissed a spinner out of hand. But actually, they prove really effective. And India have a few of those. The one to watch for me, Veda Krishnamurthy, hasn't been going particularly well in the last couple of years in terms of consistency, but has had success in Australia before. If five, if the top five Indian players can all at some stage make a contribution, look out. Izzy, how do you solve a problem like New Zealand in major tournaments? They flatter to deceive, to use the old cliche. 2017 in the World Cup, everyone thought they'd be there right at the pointy end. Nowhere to be seen in the semi-finals. 2018, we talked them up and talked them up and talked them up. Bundled out. Terrible once more. Can they find a way this time to stitch together a performance that befits the teams, the names they rather they have on their team sheet? I feel as I've been duped into there that sort of sense of New Zealand have got all the tools in the shed before and I've always said that they're going to go on and at least be finalists. So I'm going to say no because, well, it's going to happen this time, but because they haven't done it before. They, they do have amazing individual players. We've I think they've got eight in the BBL. I mean, Sophie Devine, I, I can talk about her in all facets, bowling, fielding, captain, batting. She's ridiculous at the moment. But I just don't know whether they have got that big tournament mentality. I think the the sort of the absence of Satterthwaite on um, maternity leave will be a big loss in terms of, again, having that kind of that management head in the background. So they they should, but I don't think that they will. Yeah, I love the fact that Sophie Devine is almost liberal as captain and in the form of her life, over 700 runs in, in the Women's Big Bash League last year, player of that tournament. It does liberate Susie Bates from the captaincy mm -hmm. armband. And look, Bates is still in the, the form of her life. Now, without having to be captain, no one really expecting them, honestly, to progress. You're seeing Australia and India, you're thinking they're one and two seed, they should make it through. But maybe it helps with they've got a few things uh, running against them that they won't have that baggage on their shoulders. Absolutely. I think at some point that individual talent and application is going to form into a kind of team cohesion. It just depends when and whether this is the tournament to do it. They, they have the tools in the shed, as, mm. uh, to say a, a terrible cliche. I just don't know whether they can do it this time. The experience of Priest, experience of Tahuhu, uh, the young spinner, Casper, uh, well, not young anymore. I, I say young, of course. She's been around for a while, but in terms of New Zealand colours, yeah. Amelia Kerr, uh, both Kerr sisters, really. Look, um, they're an exciting side. Let's see whether they can get over this mental hurdle. Is he the eighth seed in the tournament and the fourth team in Group A is Sri Lanka? Now, they're a strange old side because on their day, they have one of the most explosive match winners in the world. Shamari Adapadu, of course, we both remember what she did at Bristol against Australia in 2017. The 50 over World Cup, 170, utterly magnificent. Another century against the host in October last year in a bilateral series. But if she doesn't make runs by contrast, they're nowhere. And... Lo and behold, on the cusp of the tournament starting, she's taken down England. England were restricted to 122 by the Sri Lankan spinners. And Adipadu, 78 or 50 balls. They won in 12 and a half overs. Bangladesh, they did, of course, win the Asia Cup in 2018. So we can rule them out in theory, but but don't, in practice, think they, they can't be influential in this tournament. Of course, they made it via the qualifier. They won that competition. They went undefeated in that competition in Scotland last September. And we've seen before they're capable of an upset. Oh, absolutely. And I think the sort of the headlines leading into this World Cup have been Thailand because it's their first one. It's a remarkable story. But the dominance of Bangladesh throughout those qualifiers and as you say in the Asia Cup where, you know, you've got some pretty strong teams there, the likes of India, I think that we they should never be underestimated. I think we are getting to the point in women's cricket where that every, this is probably the highest, the most skillful World Cup that we're going to see across the board. Before it would be, yeah, it's going to be great, really skillful players from, I don't know, England, Australia, um, perhaps New Zealand, and then a massive gap. But I think now that gap is really closing and there are some really exciting young talent coming through. I think about their their own headband warrior, um, little speedster as well. I, th I, I think that there is definitely a potential of an upset in this group of death. Especially if the pitches allow for it. Jahanara, who wears the headband, she was the player who we were all watching very closely in this tournament two years ago, given the way she got the ball through yeah. in conditions which didn't necessarily suit her bowling. In Australia, that might be different. So, again, Bangladesh have had a, a really exciting couple of weeks. Of course, their, their boys won the Under-19s Youth World Cup. Uh, who knows? They weren't expected to do anything, and they went on to win the whole thing. Let's see if the women can, can cause an upset and cause a stir in Group A.